Good day, good morning, good morrow, good evening to all of my clients and friends and the like. Uh, it's me, Jonathan Bengal, and I'm coming to you because I have an update to share with you that is relatively food for thought. And uh, maybe you would even consider it urgent, but not necessarily. It's just food for thought. And that is, is all this, as you guys know, I am constantly educating myself. Um, attending tax update courses, et cetera, and the like, all for the benefit of my clients and for you to share this information with you. And the most hot topic right now we know is called the PPP, um, the Paycheck Protection Program. We also know it as the um, EIDL, the Emergency uh, Injury Disaster Loan, and the Employer Retention uh, Tax Credits. And this was all created out of the CARES Act. And so we all know that many of us went right away and applied for these loans. And, uh, and we were told that portions of it would be forgivable, which is still true. Now, before all of this, though, I was kind of, I kind of already suspected that it couldn't all be uh, completely free money. And so what this is, uh, why this is important is because the forgivable portion that you will be entitled to on any of these programs, including the tax credits themselves or just credits to offset your taxes for payroll. The point about this is that the, the forgivable portion will be now, uh, will be considered income. Now, let me clarify this. In our industry, we're very careful not to say that it's income. It's very clear that we're trying not to say that. But let's be real here. Now, the dealio is that normally the way government works, the way the IRS works, is that when something is forgiven, uh, for example, when you uh, have a credit card and they do something called cancellation of debt, it's essentially forgiving the debt. And so anytime that something is forgiven, the forgiveness of it all is considered income and you report it as income. Now, for the PPP and the IDL, um, even though it is not technically income, okay, the reason it becomes income is because here's what you are not going to be able to do. Whatever the PPP loan balance or the, not the loan, but the forgiveness portion, including the IDL, so just call it off forgivable, the forgivable portion will be uh, considered income in the sense that you will not be allowed to um, deduct on your tax return come year end the expenses that the PPP covers. That's going to be your, uh, your basically portions of your home office, which would be like your rents or your mortgage interest, uh, utilities, and payroll costs. So you won't be able, you won't be allowed to report that value as an expense on your books, the way you're going to offset it is going to be against the forgivable portion of the, of the PPP or the EIDL. Now, why do I call that income? Well, if I'm not allowed to deduct the expenses that the PPP pays for forgivable portion or the EIDL, uh, essentially what it's doing is it's increasing my overall net income, which will be subjected to taxes. So Although this is great, and although the government wants to help us, we all think it's an amazing opportunity, just know that on the back end, which I had suspected kind of all along, is that, that they're going to recoup. And they're going to do that by essentially saying, listen, so if we gave you, let's say, $10,000 as forgivable, and you use it all for wages, you're not going to be allowed to deduct that $10,000 as a wage expense. So um, even though mm, this isn't really explained, I mean, I'm just the messenger. And right now, the way the law is written is that that is still the case. You will not be allowed to deduct the expenses associated with the forgivable portion of the loan. I know this is going to create more confusion on your part. If you're a client of ours, just know that we are already going to start to book the differences between the PPP forgivable portions and what you can write off. And we're currently working on some tax strategies that will help to mitigate the increase, essentially, if you will, of your income as a result of the PPP or the EIDL forgivable portions. Um, 
The other thing is we have to consider is if you did not get any of that, you can go with the payroll the retention tax credits. Those tax credits will also be subjected to income as well, and that's a complex uh, new portion of the law that came out, and we're dealing with that. So essentially what I'm trying to tell you guys is that please be prepared that when you come 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 year end and you go to deduct these expenses related to the forgivable portion, Uncle Sam is gonna, not going to allow you as of today, which is May the 5th, 2020. Uh, now, unless Congress changes it, right now that's the way the rules stand. And again, I'm just delivering the message to you. So if you have a real problem with this, I really strongly, and I'm not one to get involved in politics per se, but if this really bothers you, I would be contacting my Congress members and letting them know that they need to fix this portion of the law. Because right now, all of us who receive the PPP and it is forgivable, the portion that's forgivable, you will not be allowed to deduct the expenses associated with that loan. If you have any questions about it, please feel free to email me, info at jb as in boy, financial LLC .com. You can also email me at let's get naked, all one word, let's get naked at nakedtextalk.com. And, uh, or you can call the office, 602-456-7667. But I want to give you guys all an immediate heads up.